What's gaming gamers? Today, I've got a build for you using the Striker Titan subclass and the exotic chest piece Heart of Inmost Light. This is an updated version of the Arc Heart of Inmost Light build video I uploaded during the Witch Queen expansion using Lightfall's not so new now mod system. Before I get into the full build, however, it's important to describe exactly what the Heart of Inmost Light exotic chest piece and its exotic perk, Overflowing Light, do. Overflowing Light will cause the use of any ability to empower the other two abilities. The empowered buff is an increase to both the recharge rate as well as the damage of the ability. The description for Overflowing Light says that it increases the health of barricades, but it doesn't actually increase their hit points at all. The empowered buff can stack up to two times, increasing the efficacy of the buff significantly during its duration. Empowered lasts for five seconds and is refreshed to that duration if an ability is increased to empowered times two. The empowered buff works slightly differently for each ability, so I'll describe each one separately. While your grenade has one stack of empowered, which will happen upon the use of either your melee or class ability, it will gain a 400% boost to its recharge rate, as well as a 20% boost to its damage. With two stacks of empowered, the recharge rate boost is increased to 800%, and the damage boost is increased to 35%. While your melee ability is empowered, which will happen upon the use of either your grenade or class ability, it will gain a 400% boost to its recharge rate and a 10% increase to its damage. With two stacks of empowered, your melee ability will be granted an 800% boost to its recharge rate as well as a 20% increase to its damage. While your class ability is empowered, it will gain a 25% boost to its recharge rate, which is doubled to 50% at two stacks of empowered. Now that you know how Heart of Inmost Light works, I'll get into the subclass setup I use when running this build. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup, if that's what you prefer. Once I've done that, I'll detail what each element I've chosen does, as well as explain why I've chosen it, and address any alternatives there may be. From the Thundercrash Super, the Thruster class ability, whichever jump you prefer, the Thunderclap melee, the Pulse Grenade, the Knockout aspect, the Touch of Thunder aspect, Spark of Discharge, Spark of Magnitude, Spark of Recharge, and Spark of Shock. To go in depth about the subclass, I'll first talk about the super. Thundercrash, in my opinion, will be the better option. It doesn't do much damage without the Curious of the Falling Star exotic chest piece, but as Heart of Inmost Light is also a chest piece exotic, you can hot swap Heart of Inmost Light for Curious if you so choose for a damage phase. The Fists of Havoc super is a melee super, which means for a lot of boss damage phases it will either be too dangerous to use or impossible to use if the boss floats above the ground. It can be used for ad clearing, but this build will be ad clearing plenty well enough, and you shouldn't need the super for that purpose. For those reasons, Thundercrash is the better option. For your class ability, Thruster is the quickest option to get the Empowered buff started on your Grenade and Melee ability. The Thruster ability also has a shorter cooldown than either of the Barricades, making it the best option for maximizing your Empowered buff's uptime. Thruster's base cooldown is 36 seconds, Riley Barricade's is 38 seconds, and Towering Barricade's base cooldown is 48 seconds. Thruster's base cooldown is only 2 seconds shorter than that of the Rally Barricade, but Thruster is faster to cast and doesn't leave you stationary while casting, making it safer to use in both respects. Rally Barricade will grant you buffs to your weapon's reload speed, stability, range, and flinch resistance while standing behind it. If you plan to be stationary for any period of time, Rally Barricade is a good option if you don't need extra cover, as the buffs to your weapon's proficiency is really strong in all content in the game. The Towering Barricade will simply provide a significant amount of cover, with it granting nothing else in the way of weapon buffs or otherwise. With its longer cooldown as well, I wouldn't recommend running the Towering Barricade for this build, unless you're specifically running it because you know you'll need it for an encounter in whatever activity you're playing. Onto the melee ability, Thunderclap will be the easiest one to use. Thunderclap is a chargeable melee ability, meaning the longer you hold it, the more damage it will do. Importantly, it can also be used without charging it up almost at all, which means it's a very quick melee ability to use to grant the empowered buff to your grenade and class abilities. Both the Seismic Strike and Ballistic Slam melees require you to have been sprinting for a short period of time before use, which can make it more awkward and less intuitive to empower the other two abilities. As for the grenade, I have to talk about the first aspect, Touch of Thunder, as well. Touch of Thunder will enhance the effects of four different grenades, those being the Flashbang Grenade, the Pulse Grenade, the Lightning Grenade, and the Storm Grenade. The Flashbang Grenade will emit a blinding explosion upon contact with a surface or enemy the first time it does, as well as blinding when the grenade itself explodes. The Pulse Grenade will create an Ionic Trace upon damaging a target, with it creating subsequent Ionic Traces on a 1 second cooldown so long as the Pulse Grenade is still damaging a target. Furthermore, its damage increases over the course of its linger duration, making Pulse Grenade the optimal grenade for higher health targets who stay somewhat stationary. The Lightning Grenade gets granted a second grenade charge, as well as intrinsically applying Jolt to any enemy hit by the initial Lightning Strike. The Storm Grenade is granted a Storm Cloud with tracking capabilities that will follow enemies for 4 seconds, firing Lightning Bolts at enemies below the Storm Cloud. All of those grenades are decent options, with my favorite being the Pulse Grenade, as the extra ability energy granted by the Ionic Traces will help immensely in keeping your abilities fully charged and ready to use. On to the second aspect, Knockout is the one to choose. Knockout will infuse your unpowered melee attacks with arc energy upon breaking a combatant shield or dealing damage to an enemy who is below 30% health. Knockout is active for 6 seconds and is refreshed to that duration every time either of those criteria are met. While Knockout is active, you gain a plethora of buffs. Your unpowered melee will deal 60% more damage, your powered melee will deal 25% more damage, your melee lunge distance is increased, melee kills instantly start health regeneration, 
and hitting an enemy with a melee attack will instantly amplify you. Additionally, unpowered melee attacks will count as powered melee attacks. This feeds into the Heart of Imlos Lightning Exotic chest piece as well. While Knockout is active, hitting an enemy with your unpowered melee will empower both your grenade and your class ability, which will grant those abilities increased damage and cooldown rates for its duration. The empowered buff is then refreshed to its max duration every time unpowered melee damage is dealt while Knockout is active, effectively creating a near 100% uptime on the empowered buffs of your grenade and class ability. With the aspects out of the way, I'll get into the fragments for this build. Firstly, run Spark of Discharge. Spark of Discharge will increase the efficacy of any arc weapon you have, whether it be primary, special, or heavy. Spark of Discharge will progress a hidden counter every time you get a kill with an arc weapon, and once that counter hits 100, it will summon an Ionic Trace. Spark of Discharge has no cooldown, meaning the more enemies you kill with your arc weapons, the more Ionic Traces you'll generate. The counter progresses by 34% when killing any rank and file enemy, 67% when killing any elite enemy, and by 100% when killing any mini boss or boss. This means that, on average, you'll be generating an Ionic Trace once every 2-3 to three kills with your arc weapons, which will help refresh your abilities very frequently. Spark of Discharge will lower your strength stat by 10 points, so keep that in mind when putting together your armor build. For the second fragment, if you're running either the Lightning, Pulse, or Storm grenades, run Spark of Magnitude. Spark of Magnitude will buff all three of these grenades, increasing their duration. The Lightning Grenade will be granted one extra Lightning Bolt, increasing its total strikes from 4 to 5. The Pulse Grenade will pulse twice more, increasing its total pulses from 6 to 8. The Storm Grenade is granted an extra volley of Lightning Bolts, and the Tracking Storm granted by Touch of Thunder has its duration increased from 4 seconds to 5.5 seconds. Overall, any of these grenades will work, so use whichever one you like the most. For the third fragment, run Spark of Recharge. Spark of Recharge will grant you an increase to your grenade and melee ability recharge rates by 400% while you're at critical health, and will stay active as long as you stay critical. This isn't a fragment that you want to be actively trying to proc, but having it equipped will help your abilities recharge when you need them the most. If you're running an arc special weapon, you can swap out Spark of Recharge for Spark of Beacons. Spark of Beacons will, upon killing an enemy with an arc special weapon while amplified, cause a blinding explosion at that enemy's location, blinding any enemies nearby. This will help with disabling enemies for a short period of time, allowing you more safety when dealing with large groups of enemies who would otherwise be a significant threat. Lastly for Fragments, Spark of Shock is a great choice for increasing the damage output of your grenades. Spark of Shock will cause your grenades to jolt enemies damaged by them, which will cause damage to those enemies as well as chaining lightning to nearby enemies. Additionally, the Jolt effect stuns Overload Champions, meaning if you have Spark of Shock equipped, any one of your arc grenades will also stun Overload Champions. Furthermore, Spark of Shock will decrease your Discipline stat by 10 points, so keep that in mind when putting together your armor build. As an alternative fragment, you could swap out Spark of Beacons or Spark of Recharge, whichever one you're running in the third slot, to Spark of Ions. Spark of Ions will summon an Ionic Trace upon defeating a Jolted Target, which would be a very strong fragment, but unfortunately it has a 10 second cooldown between Ionic Trace generations. I don't believe it's worth a fragment slot for one Ionic Trace every 10 seconds, when I could have either the Blinding Explosions or increased Ability Recharge rates from the other two fragments, but it's an option that's there if you want it. With the subclass build out of the way, I'll talk about the Seasonal Artifact if you're playing during Season 20, the Season of Defiance. As the Season's Artifact isn't very tailored towards the Arc subclass, this section will be shorter than it usually is. In the first column, run whichever anti-champion mods you need for the content you'll be running. The Spark of Shock fragment will allow your grenades to stun Overload Champions, but that's a risky thing to rely on as Overload Champions will heal very fast in higher difficulty content, so I still suggest running an Overload Weapon mod. In the second column, run the Authorized mod for grenades. This mod will decrease the cost of any armor mod affecting your grenades to a cost of 1 energy, which will allow you to slot more mods into your armor. In the third column, run the Shatter Orbs mod. Shatter Orbs will cause an orb of power to be summoned upon the destruction of a combatant shield with the corresponding energy type. This only works the first time any one combatant shield is destroyed, meaning you can't farm a specific enemy for effectively infinite orbs, but this still provides a significant increase to your orb of power generating capabilities. There aren't any mods in the fourth column that specifically synergize with this build, so to skip to the fifth column, run the Prismatic Transfer mod. Prismatic Transfer will grant your teammates a 20% boost to their outgoing weapon damage upon the casting of your super, so long as their subclass element differs from yours. Unfortunately, this damage boost doesn't stack with any other damage boost, like Radiant or Weapons of Light, but if none of those are active, Prismatic Transfer will help to increase your teammates' damage output by a substantial margin. With the artifact now done, I'll get into the armor setup for this build. Before I get into the mods for this build, however, I'll describe my recommendations for stat distribution. In the top 3 stat grouping of Mobility, Resilience, and Recovery, spec into Resilience first, with Recovery second, and Mobility last. Resilience is the most important stat here, as it dictates both your base damage resistance by 3% per tier, up to its maximum of 30% at tier 10, but as it's the Titan class stat, it will also dictate the base cooldown of your class ability. Recovery is also a very nice stat to have, as the higher your recovery, the shorter the delay is after having taken damage for your health and shields to start regenerating. It also increases the rate at which you regenerate both your health and shields the higher tier you have. Mobility simply affects movement speed and initial jump height, which isn't important to focus with this build. 
In the bottom three stack grouping of Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, spec into Discipline and Strength about equally, with Intellect being a stat you can ignore the same as you would Mobility. Discipline will govern the base cooldown of your grenades, and Strength will govern the base cooldown of your melee ability. This means that both stats are important for your ability loop up time. I generally focus Discipline a little bit more than Strength, as the majority of grenade cooldowns are longer than melee ability cooldowns, meaning having a higher Discipline stat will affect the grenade more strongly than a higher Strength stat will affect the melee ability. Intellect is a stat you want to have at least 30 points in, as anything less than 30 decreases the amount of super energy gained by dealing damage and getting kills with your weapons. My armor stats have me at 35 mobility, 92 resilience, 61 recovery, 80 discipline, 26 intellect, and 60 strength. With stat distribution done, I'll get into armor mods for this build. I'll first put everything on screen as a prescriptive setup if that's what you prefer. When I'm done with that, I'll go over each mod individually, explaining what it does and why I've chosen it, and I'll describe any alternative options should there be any. On your helmet, run one Ashes to Assets mod, one Hands-On mod, and one Harmonic Siphon mod. On your arms, run a Firepower mod, an Impact Induction mod, and a Momentum Transfer mod. On your chest piece, simply run whatever resistance mods you need for the content you'll be running. On your legs, run an Absolution mod, an Innervation mod, and an Invigoration mod. Lastly, on your mark, run a Bomber mod, an Outreach mod, and a Utility Kickstart mod. To go in-depth with the armor build, I'll first go over the helmet's mods. The Ashes to Assets mod will give you extra super energy upon getting any kills with your grenades. This will help with your supers uptime, as having it up more frequently allows you to use it more often, which is especially helpful in encounters wherein mechanic phases are short and damage phases are frequent. The hands-on mod will do the same as Ashes to Assets in providing extra super energy, except it will grant the extra super energy on powered melee kills instead of grenade kills. I'm not 100% sure if this works with the unpowered melee while the knockout aspect is active, but in my time using this build, it feels like it is. If anyone has any insight into this, please do let me know in the comments below. Lastly, the Harmonic Siphon mod will simply summon an Orb of Power upon getting multi-kills with any Arc weapon, which will be happening often so long as you're running Arc weapons. As for alternatives, it's perfectly fine to swap out either the Ashes to Assets mod, the Hands-On mod, or both in favor of Ammo Finders if you feel you need it. I generally don't, but if you like to run it that way, it won't affect the build very negatively and could increase your total damage output with the extra ammo drops. As for the Arms mods, the Firepower mod will summon an Orb of Power upon getting a kill with your grenade on a 1 second cooldown. This 1 second cooldown means that any lingering grenade can summon multiple orbs during the duration of the grenade so long as it gets kills outside of the 1 second cooldown. The Impact Induction mod will grant you 20% grenade energy upon dealing any melee damage whether it be powered or unpowered on a hidden 7 second cooldown. This will do well every 7 seconds to grant you a significant boost to your grenade's energy, further increasing the uptime of your abilities. To complete the loop between your grenade and your melee ability, the Momentum Transfer mod will grant you 20% melee energy upon dealing damage with your grenade on a separate 7 second hidden cooldown. This will do the same for your melee ability as Impact Induction will for your grenade, simply granting you energy every so often to increase the efficacy of your ability loop. Onto the chest pieces mods, just run whichever resistance mods you feel you require for the activity you'll be doing. This build doesn't take significant advantage of any armor charge mods, so you don't need a charged up mod. As for resistance mods, one important thing to note is that having 3 resistance mods of one energy type doesn't have any extra effect over only having 2 resistance mods for that energy type. If you have 2 of 1 energy type resistance mods, you'll be granted 25% damage resistance to that energy type, and that isn't increased by having a third copy of the same mod, so always equip a separate one. This is a known bug to Bungie and will hopefully be fixed at some point in the future. For the legs mods, firstly the Absolution mod. This mod will grant you 5% energy to all three of your abilities upon the collection of an Orb of Power, which isn't much, but it stacks with the next two mods. Innervation will grant you 10% grenade energy upon the collection of an Orb of Power, which is added onto Absolution's 5% granted energy for a total of 15% grenade energy every time you collect an Orb of Power. Similarly, Invigoration will grant you 10% melee ability energy upon the collection of an Orb of Power, which, in combination with Absolution's 5%, will grant you 15% melee ability energy when you collect an Orb of Power. If you want, you can forego Absolution in favor of a Recuperation mod. Recuperation will grant you 70 health instantly upon the collection of an Orb of Power, which can and does help significantly with survivability when in the midst of a lot of enemies. If you find yourself struggling to stay alive, Recuperation is the better mod to choose, as this build summons orbs frequently and you'll be in range to collect them most of the time. Lastly, for the Titan Marks mods, the Bomber mod will grant you 12% grenade energy instantly upon the use of your class ability. This pairs really well with the next mod, Outreach, which will grant you 12% melee ability energy upon the use of your class ability as well. This means every time you use your class ability, not only will it empower both your grenade and melee abilities, it will also instantly grant them 12% energy, which helps significantly with their uptimes. The last mod, Utility Kickstart, will grant you a differing amount of class ability energy upon the use of your class ability depending on how many stacks of armor charge you have. If you have zero stacks of armor charge, Utility Kickstart will still work, instantly refunding you 12.9% of your class ability's energy back upon its use. 
With one stack of armor charge, that energy is increased to 17.15% energy. With two stacks, it's increased to 23.4%. And with three stacks of armor charge, the maximum you can hold with no charged up chest piece mods, you'll be instantly refunded 31.1% class ability energy upon the use of your class ability. This does significantly well to increase the uptime of your class ability, letting you empower both your grenade and melee abilities more often, increasing their damage and recharge rates significantly. With armor mods now done, I'll get into some weapon recommendations I have for use with this build. Before I do though, first I want to talk about the best weapon perk for arc builds, Volt Shot. If you finish a reload within 3.8 seconds of having killed an enemy, you will be granted Volt Shot for the next 7 seconds. Volt Shot will cause your next shot to jolt the target hit by it, which, if you're running the Spark of Ions fragment, will cause an Ionic Trace to be summoned when that enemy dies. The jolt effect will also stun Overload Champions, so if you're running a weapon that has Volt Shot on it, it is effectively also an Overload weapon. But it does require the setup of having gotten a kill and subsequently reloading to actually proc the Volt Shot perk and apply Jolt. As for weapons that can roll Volt Shot, there aren't too many of them overall, so I'll go over them right now really quickly and then get into which ones I recommend specifically. For primary ammo weapons, there's the Dark Decider Auto Rifle from the Iron Banner loot pool, the Posterity Hand Cannon from the Descent Encounter in the Deepstone Crypt Raid, the Philotactic Spiral Pulse Rifle from Neomuna, the Tarnished Metal Scout Rifle in the Brigand's Lost Sidearm from the Season of Plunder weapon pool, and the Ikelos SMG V3 from the Season of the Seraph weapon pool. Special ammo weapons that can roll Volt Shot are the Iterative Loop Fusion Rifle from Neomuna, the Wizened Rebuke Fusion Rifle and the Gnorus Axe Shotgun from the Iron Banner Loot Pool, the Prodigal Return Grenade Launcher from the Season of Defiance Weapon Pool, the Macabre Sniper Rifle from the Festival of the Lost Halloween Event, and the Path of Least Resistance Trace Rifle from the Season of the Seraph Weapon Pool. There are only two heavy weapons that can roll Volt Shot. Those are the Sail Spy Pitch Glass Linear Fusion Rifle from the Season of Plunder Weapon Pool, and the Terminus Horizon Machine Gun from all three encounters in the Spire of the Watcher Dungeon. Not all of the weapons I've just mentioned are still acquirable, but I'm hoping that next season, Bungie will make weapons from past seasons legacy focusable, if not for just acquiring their patterns. To get into a couple weapons I recommend you use, my favorite Volt Shot weapon is the Ikelos SMG V3 from the Season of the Seraph. This aggressive frame SMG does really good damage, feels really good to use despite its slower reload speed, and has some good perk combinations. As it's no longer possible to acquire random rolls of this weapon, I'll simply describe my crafted roll if you either got it during Season of the Seraph, or are able to acquire it next season, the Season of the Deep. In its third column, I run Threat Detector, and in its fourth column, I run Volt Shot. As for a weapon you can actually currently acquire, the Prodigal Return Special Grenade Launcher is surprisingly fun for not being a waveframe. Prodigal Return is craftable, and its pattern can be acquired from doing Defiant Battleground activities or focusing Defiant Engrams at the War Table at the Helm. As for perks I recommend, in its third column, Lead from Gold and Field Prep would be my two top picks. In its fourth column, Volt Shot is the top option, but if you're using this more as a grenade launcher and less of a jolt applier, Demolitionist would be good for granting yourself grenade energy. My crafted roll has lead from gold and volt shot on it. The Dark Decider Auto Rifle from Iron Banner is also a fun weapon to use. I was hunting for a specific roll, but unfortunately didn't get one I wanted. The next time Iron Banner rolls around, suggesting its perk pool doesn't change, in the third column, Subsistence will be the best perk. In its fourth column, there are a couple of good perks. Volt Shot is the best one, but Golden Tricorn and Dragonfly are both decent choices as well if you can't get Volt Shot to roll. With my weapon recommendations out of the way, I'll go over a quick playstyle that would suit this build. When first entering an engagement, decide whether using your melee ability or throwing a grenade is the best to start the ability loop. If your grenade is the best option, throw the grenade and then use your class ability to empower your grenade while it's in transit to also grant yourself the extra energy from the bomber mod in your titan mark. With your melee ability, it's smart to use your class ability before using your melee ability as that will grant it the damage boost before using it. Once you've used one of your abilities and your class ability, I recommend waiting a little bit before using your other ability. With the nerfs harder than most light received when lightfall released, it's a better idea to space out your abilities so as to maximize the increase to their recharge rates. Collect any ionic traces and orbs of power you spawn to refill your ability energy and just use your abilities whenever you need them. This build doesn't have a very specific playstyle and will suit passive or aggressive playstyles alike, so use it yourself and see how you enjoy using it. And that's all for the video. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a like. If you have any questions or constructive criticisms, leave them in the comment section. I read all of them and reply to most of them. There are no stupid questions, so if you don't know something, feel free to ask. If you would like to see videos similar to this one, please subscribe. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.